So Lake Nation, this is my exit interview. Although it was an underwhelming season this year, and just a lot of things didn't go our way. Laker fans, I have high hopes that next season we will return much stronger, much faster, much better than this year. I had an opportunity to speak with LeBron James. And I wanted to show him a few things uh, from this season to get his input on what he thought. And I'm just going to show you what I showed him and then I'll I'll show you his his reaction. Let's take a look. And so, when I spoke with LeBron James, I said, hey, LeBron, how do you gauge Westbrook's season with you this year? And this is what he had to say. Attention! Wackest thing ever. Wackest thing ever. Wackest thing ever. Face in your face. <laughs> it was incredible, the response I got from LeBron James. <laughs> I watched a few of the exit interviews. I haven't got to them all. I'm still kind of dissecting everything. There was a few things that I want to point out, a few things I want to talk about. And I'm going to talk about them in detail. And, uh, yeah, that's all coming up next on the Film Room Podcast. Laker Nation, listen. Listen. The... The season that we had this year, y'all know as well as I do, it was definitely not the season that we had hoped for. There was a lot of bright spots, and there was much, much more dark spots than um, we care to have had. And this season was definitely, like I mentioned earlier, just underwhelming and disappointing and discouraging and disheartening and every dish you can think of, right? I've been hearing a lot of reports saying that uh, this is the bed that uh, LeBron James has made. Now he has to lie in it. Listen, if you watch the exit interview, you hear clear as day that Rob Palenka says every decision based on this roster and the roster in the future lies on my shoulders. Meaning, like any head coach is going to ask their star player, hey, What do you think about playing with this person? That star player then says yay or nay, weighs in their feelings on that player, and it is ultimately the Rob Palenkas of the world that make the decision on whether or not to add that player to the roster. Now, whether or not the superstar is persuasive enough and has the salesmanship enough to sell that player to said Rob Palenkas of the world is ultimately, probably, what weighs heavy on that decision of the Rob Palenkas. And Rob Palenka, clear as day, told you that the Russell Westbrook trade and bringing him to L.A. was his decision. So let's stop with the narrative that LeBron James wanted Russell Westbrook. Let's stop with this, right? Because if LeBron James wanted Russell Westbrook that bad as people make it seem to be, then Russell Westbrook would have been playing with him on the Cavs. Russell Westbrook would have been playing with him on Miami Heat. I mean, the list goes on and on, right? If somebody came to me after seeing what Russell Westbrook did in Washington and said, hey, we got a chance to get this person or that person. 
Which one do you think you would play with better? If Russell Westbrook is my bro, more so than the other guy, I'm going to say my bro. Bring my bro here. He's from here. Da 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 da. I'm going to sell it, right? And bring him here. Now that's where that stops. That decision and that question. You ask me a question, I'm going to give you my honest opinion of how I feel about it. People act like it's LeBron James' fault for how Russell Westbrook played this year. Which is the dumbest thing. And how they want to spin this narrative on LeBron to make you think less of for LeBron. Or less than of LeBron. Like they haven't been doing that his whole career. Y'all just falling for this one, right? Did LeBron James have any idea that Russell Westbrook would have played this terribly this season? Huh? I ain't hear you. No, because nobody can see the future unless y'all think LeBron James can see the future. And then you can judge LeBron James on his decision to bring Russell Westbrook to this team. Because if LeBron James cannot foresee the future, then it is not his fault for saying, hey, yeah, I think I'd like to play with Russell Westbrook. You know what I'm saying? Listen, out of every analyst, me, myself included, I consider myself an analyst, and out of all the analysts and all of the older players and whoever else wants to say anything about LeBron James, listen, if somebody came to your bum ass, Ask you if you wanted to play with Russell Westbrook on your team right now in a pickup game, five on five, you would say yes too. Bum ass. Listen, don't get me started. LeBron James made a decision and said, yes, I want to play with Russell Westbrook. That does not mean that just because he played bad that LeBron James should take the blame for this n- playing bad. Are you f- You know, sometimes you just got to speak plain for the idiots in the world that don't get it. You can tell I'm a little hot about that. (laughs) And so Rob Palenka clearly said, listen, this is on me. Y'all can say what y'all want. We're not going to speak to that narrative. We're not going to say, oh, this narrative is false. LeBron James didn't say bring him here. I said bring him here. Because what does it matter? Who said bring him here? He's here and he played like s***. Okay. And to be honest with you, looking back at his season, I don't think he played that bad as people make it out to be. He was terrible, yes. But everybody seems to play terrible with LeBron James. If you have a bowling league, right? And you have a bowler that's going to bowl a 300. Next to a bowler that gets a 168, listen, he looks like shit. That's everybody LeBron James plays with. Anthony Davis included. See, LeBron James has been bowling a 300 every season for a long time. Y'all just let the analysts and the the haters of the world discount what he's been doing. You know what I'm saying? They think Nikola Jokic is the MVP based on what he's doing. LeBron James has done that every single year. Oh, and just because it's a white that y'all want to say he's MVP if y'all don't knock it the f- off LeBron James has been doing that since he was a got f- rookie this is my exit interview I'm, I'm spilling all the fuck today y'all want to say this dude is an MVP just because he's playing like LeBron has been playing for the past several years get the f- out of here knock it off Knock it off. The man is 85 years old, still putting up MVP numbers. And all y'all want to talk about is his decision to bring Russell Westbrook to the Lakers. It's crazy what they do to this man. It's crazy. And that's my take on that. My take on the Frank Vogel firing. Glad he's going. Get him the f*** out of here. Frank Vogel was terrible. 
Anybody that wants to come to his defense, I welcome all challenges. I will debate you into the f***ing ground. Vogel has been the worst coach ever. No, I'm playing. He hasn't been the worst coach ever. But he has been terrible. Listen, when they won that championship, that was all LeBron and AD. Vogel ain't have s*** to do with it. Y'all think he was coaching them, huh? Y'all think he coached LeBron James to win a championship? Knock it off. AD was hungry. It was his first year removed from New Orleans. He had something to prove. He had something to show y'all. But once he showed y'all, hey, I told you I could do it. Sometimes that's all you need. People get full after that. I don't need to show you no more. I done proved it. I done won a championship. I done won my ring. Beside LeBron James. You know what I mean? You could have put a high school coach in Vogel's spot and we would have still won that championship. Are you f***ing kidding me? Vogel did absolutely nothing. But LeBron James being the stand-up gentleman that he is, said put some respect on his name. Because he told y'all to play defense. <laughs> I ain't playing no defense. He told y'all to play defense. And they won a championship. They were incredible. But Vogel hasn't done nothing since. Listen, you can tell the best of a man when he hits adversity. Whether he stands up and he's ten toes down. Listen, y'all don't hear me, man. That adversity hit and he dropped the sh He had no explanation. This dude had 41 different starting lineups. Are y'all... He was absolutely horrible. 41 different starting lineups didn't have a, like a closing lineup or nothing. Y'all want to defend this dude? He's an NBA coach for a reason. I'm not discounting that. LeBron James had been doing that for a very long time, making these bum ass coaches look good. It's his IQ. It's what he does on the floor. They didn't teach him schemes. They didn't teach him how to read every defense, every offensive play. That's LeBron James doing that. Not saying he hasn't been developed by coaches, of course that comes with it, but Frank Vogel ain't teach him none of that. Frank Vogel was just lucky enough to sit in that chair and watch the f***ing show. That's all he did, because as soon as adversity hit, listen, he showed you absolutely nothing. No adjustments, terrible rotations, terrible, I mean, just everything was bad. I'm surprised they didn't let his ass go before All-Star break. So Frank Vogel, I'm not happy that you're fired, bro, because everybody needs a job. You just don't have a job with the Lakers and coaching LeBron James. And that's my take on that.